A couple of months ago, you may recall receiving an email inviting you to participate in a survey that was conducted by Tri Trifecta Research Group. Trifecta Research is a leading research and advisory firm that serves Fortune 1000 companies and agencies, some of whom may provide construction products or services. When those companies want to improve their decision-making process, Trifecta assists them by giving them access to their subject matter experts. That's where you come in. There are companies out there who want your opinion. To companies that manufacture and market residential building products, you're a subject matter expert as a seasoned building designer. Trifecta reached out to AIBD because we're an industry leader and we represent you and many others like you with the same skills and, and, and experiences. They have recruited thousands of experts for hundreds of engagements. Trifecta is partnering with AIBD to gather feedback from you and your peers to bring innovative new products to the marketplace and to serve you and your clients better. If you qualify for one or more of their surveys or focus groups, you have a chance to be one of the few designers that get to see the new to the world concepts and products, give your opinion, and possibly get compensated. This partnership started with Trifecta surveying us, the AIBD community, to find out who we are, what kind of projects we do, and a few other things. Hundreds of you responded, and recently I had the opportunity to Zoom with Linda McKenzie, the Senior Vice President of Trifecta Research Group. Join me as Linda shares her findings, the, her interpretation of the data, as well as the opportunities that we have moving forward. Dave, thank you very much. We enjoy conducting the survey, and we look forward to presenting your members with opportunities to see next generation products or to unearth some of their challenges so that we can feed the front end of innovation for many, many, many manufacturers that hope to uh, be selected as partners for your designers in the future. So without further ado, I will start the sharing of what we learned first, the core fundamentals about your members. This research was conducted in August of 2020 during a year where COVID was impacting the industry. However, none of the questions were really focused on that. They were really focused on who your members are. So a little bit about the background in the research approach. It was a very brief survey, just five minutes in length. It was completed between July 30th and August 24th, and it was sent to 85, over 8,500 designers from an internal list that was provided by AIBD. Respondents were offered the opportunity to participate in a sweepstakes for three Amazon gift cards that were available and 443 of your members or a healthy 5% response rate opted in for the survey. So first we asked them about their profession and we asked them in their own self-described words to say how they would label their firm. And as you can see, the vast majority chose a design firm as the label for how they talk about their business. But there was a healthy percentage that said they were design and build, and it was important to emphasize that they also were able to execute a build or a construction project. And a full 14% said they were actually architectural firms or architectural hyphenated engineering firms. You have a few builders in the mix, one person that simply said they were remodelers, some general contractors, and a small amount of students answered, which means that a large majority of the people who took the survey are acting professionals in the field today. They are not students. Next up, we ask them about their projects. We want to understand the nature of how many types of projects that they handled and the mix. So you will see that the dark blue bars are nets, and by that I mean they are roll-ups of the lighter two bars underneath. So the vast majority of AIBD's responding members focus on single family custom homes. In fact, 91% of them said they, they actually would in, in, in take, undertake a project of that type or a spec or tract house. But a full third of the respondents also, also said they did design projects for multifamily and for rental type projects, co-ops, condominiums, et cetera. And one in four said they were doing office building projects, so very commercial. And then underneath commercial, we see a wide variety, including retail, even industrial 
facilities, warehousing, uh, small facilities to develop products, uh, leisure and hospitality uh, businesses, healthcare, modular housing was a surprising 10%, and we know this sector to be on the rise, but 10% of the 443 members that responded already are actively engaged in projects in modular. So a really, really exciting result and broad range for the type of products that AIBD members handle. What the, the main percent of their projects. So if you look in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the question that was asked. Typically, what percentage of your company's business falls into each of these categories? And we're talking about both new and design and remodel. And as you can see, new construction significantly overtakes remodel though they're very active in both on the right-hand side of the screen. And on the left-hand side of the screen, again, single-family standards tracked or single-family custom is still the vast majority of their projects, but you see the distribution of their projects across all the other types of applications and design. And that gives you a sense of who these 443 people are. The average sale price of the residential units that they are working on. So in the past 12 months, we wanted to understand whether they were working for extremely affluent clients or, or high-end builders or whether they, it was more in the mean of the U.S. market. So when we asked how much of their work was for home values that would sell at $500,000 or less, 55% of their projects were in that range. And as you can see over to the right, the U.S. new home average is 393. So they are right in that sweet spot. Um, but interestingly, almost a full half were north of that value. So 500,000 or greater in value. And as you can see, 32% of projects were in the 500 to million dollar range. That was the value of the home that they were designing for. It could have been the entire home. It could have been sections of the home that they were designing for. But there are some extremely high end high net worth designers in your database, a full 10% said they were working on projects in the $1 million to $2.5 million range. So I thought that was an extremely interesting finding. The types of residential projects that they do. So when we described homes in a different way, we described them as starter homes, family homes, or executive level homes and estates. As you can see, the bulk are what someone would consider a family home and not necessarily a starter family home, but actually a little bit further up in the milestones of life type of home, a trade up home or potentially a long term permanent home. But a hearty one third are working on executive level homes or estates of some type. So you definitely have some some premium designers out there and I'm sure the revenues of their companies will reflect that. Projects worked on in the past year. So what were they doing? What was their area of concentration? And again, the blue bars are a net roll up of the lighter bars underneath. So kitchens stole the day, kitchens and baths, clearly. Uh, a large, large percentage of designers are working on kitchens and baths, either new or remodel. Um, we were interested to know whether or not you would consider that a basic kitchen, a moderate kitchen, or a luxury kitchen. And you can see healthy, healthy percentages in the moderate to luxury level. So we're talking about $25,000 kitchens to potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in those kitchens, which I also thought was interesting. And we asked the same thing about bathrooms. How many of the basic bathroom uh, remodels were they, in many cases, the bathrooms were remodeled. Uh, what was the value of that remodel? And I think less than $14,000 is a good divining rod because if you look on Angie's List or Home Advisor and they talk about the average bath remodel, it typically falls in the ten dollars to $14,000 range simply because there are a lot of materials, vanities, shower doors, jacuzzi tubs, uh, toilet commodes. Uh, so you, you quickly get to ten dollars to $14,000. But a healthy percentage started at $14,000 and went to far more than $25,000 or more. And that correlates with the percentage of projects they're doing in higher net worth homes. When you're working with $500,000 homes all the way up to north of $3 million, 
uh, the investment needs to be higher in, in the materials and the design, and you can see that correlation here. Also interesting. Full-time employees. So what, if, what are the size of these entities, these design entities that are executing these multifamily projects or multi-million dollar estate projects? The vast majority, and again, the blue bar is a net. So 77% of all of the members that responded to the survey, not necessarily all AIBD members, but AIBD members that responded to this survey had five or fewer employees. And 54% of the 443 people that responded said they did it alone, which means they developed these designs. And even if they build, they're not doing the build. That's being contracted out. They probably have partners that they refer business to on a regular basis, but it is not uncommon. In fact, three out of every four members in the group that answered this survey, not necessarily all AIBD members, but in the group that answered this survey, three out of four members had five or fewer total employees in their entity. You will see that 2% of the 443 people that responded, which is really only eight or 10 firms, said they had 100 employees or more, another 2% in the 50 to 99 range, and another 5% in the 20 to 49 range. So if you put that all together, about 10% or 40 firms of the 443 that responded have at least 20 to 100 or more employees. But the vast majority are very, very small business concerns which is interesting in a year of COVID because there's been a tremendous amount of financial support for small businesses. And I don't know if these AIBD members have taken advantage of those government loans that are, um, you do not have to pay them back. The loans do not have to be paid back provided you continue to employ the, the status number of employees that you had at the time that the loan was dispensed. So it'd be interesting to know if any of your members took advantage of those government uh, funding programs. They are, they are non-repayable loans if you sustain your employees and keep people employed, keep the economy, economy moving. The annual revenues of the firms that answered the survey. So three out of four, and as you can imagine, this again correlates to their corporate size, had revenues of less than $500,000 a year. So these are not multi, multi-million dollar concerns. These are very boutique individual designers. Probably if they work alone, that would explain revenues of less than $100,000. They may not even do it full time. Uh, a, lot, a lot of them, a full 25% or one in four, is earning a very nice income at 100 to $250,000 a year, especially if they only have one or two employees. And we can create a cross tab for AIBD, if you like, that shows the intersection between the money that they make and how many people work there to provide you with an average per firm, which might be an interesting number to look at. Um, but those that are making a half a million dollars or more was almost one in every three of the firms that responded to the survey. And some of them are making significant revenues. As you can see, 3% said that their annual revenues were 100 million or more a year. And I would suspect that that cross correlates to those firms with 50, 100, 150 employees. Uh, but you can see there's some healthy earnings out there as the firm size grows. But because the vast majority of the people that responded to the survey happen to be the smaller concerns within the AIBD membership, you see lower, lower annual revenues. What is their job function? We asked them which best describes the company where you're currently working. So what really are they good at? Are they really good at architecture? Are they really good as a contractor? Are they really good with engineering, interior design, or something else? And the vast majority of them described their firms as extremely strong as building designers, which makes absolute sense given their membership with AIBD. Uh, but 11% were architects. And if it would prove interesting to AIBD, we'd be happy to see people checked other and we provided them with the opportunity to say what that other was. And in many cases, it mapped back to the other five categories. They just worded it differently. 
but we'd be happy to send you a list of what those other functions are. But just know that the vast majority of the people that responded said they, they felt as though they were clearly building designers. That was their strength. How long have they worked in the profession? I found this fascinating. Again, the blue bars represent a roll up or a net of the lighter blue bars underneath. So not quite a third have been working for fewer than 20 years in their profession. But what's really interesting is almost three out of four are extremely tenured in their field. So of the 443 people who took the survey, these are extremely tenured, experienced building design professionals, which really says something about AIBD as an organization, because it's difficult to hold extremely experienced people captive and engaged because they've learned a great deal throughout their careers. It's hard to provide curriculum that continues to be thought leadership for them. But these people are extremely experienced. A full 45% of them have more than 30 years of experience in their field. So AIBD has something tremendous to offer to the outside world from your membership. And I know that at Trifecta, we work with a lot of manufacturers of products that are used in building design. It could be software. It could be lumber materials. It could be uh, smart and connected electronics. They would value most, the most experienced in the profession, to give them perspective on the value of a new concept or a new idea or an optimization of something from an experienced professional who has seen it all over the years. And we have that in AIBD. You have that as a wealthy resource that you can share with the world because your members are extremely tenured. What is their age? And now I'm talking about the individual that's responding to the survey. And again, as correlates to years of experience in the field, you will see that the vast majority of people who responded to the survey were ages 45 to 64. There are two reasons for that. One, after 65, people may retire and they're no longer taking surveys, nor are they potentially members of AIBD. But for those that are still working, you have a very mature group of people in this AIBD group. However, one in every five was very, very young, 18 to 35. So we're talking about the Gen Z and the millennial generation. Unlike many organizations that Trifecta works with, AIBD has successfully attracted millennials. And most cannot claim that one in every five in their member ranks are young, uh, but you've been very successful at doing that. And that's exciting for a different reason. They may lack the experience, but they have a very current perspective on what current design demands are. They've just come out of school. They're doing fresh projects for multifamily housing developers and for homeowners and home builders. They're remodeling for people. And even a client that would hire someone young, say age 26 or 28, is looking for that perspective. They believe that they hold that perspective. So it's exciting that you have this very seasoned and mature group, but I think it's equally exciting that one in every five of the people that responded is in this 18 to 35 range. I also love the fact that one in every four is over 65, and they're probably still working, and they're still a member of AIBD. So for thought leadership, as they age out of their profession, they still enjoy being members. And there's still a big subset of your member base. And so that is not insignificant. It's not as though it's 5% or over 65, it's nearly 25%. So we thought that was a very compelling evidence that AIBD must have cross-generational traction and whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Okay, so where did they come from in the country? Well, a lot of them are from the South and I can, hypothesize why that might be as well, because uh, there's a lot of development and growth in the South in building. If you look at building projects nationwide, the West and the South are the active regions, and a lot of your design designers are coming from those areas. The Northeast is the slightest region. It's a difficult area to do new construction and remodel because it's a, a much older part of the country. But if AIBD were going to target increased or more balanced membership, you'd want to do that in the Northeast. 
Alrighty. And what is their level of education? Again, half of them say that they have at least some level of college, potentially less, which means they're active and successful in their fields without having to acquire a bachelor's, a master's, advanced engineering degrees. There are very few, uh, report, in fact, zero reported some high school, and only 4% said that, that they topped out at a high school diploma. One in five said they had some type of college, whether it was a design program or, or, a, or a certificate or something. But 42%, nearly half, have a bachelor's degree or higher, and roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 15% have much higher degrees, master's degrees, PhDs, or some other higher level certification beyond a bachelor's in the field. All right, professional certifications. When we asked them about a certifications list that was supplied by AIBD, we wanted to see where, first of all, do you have professional certifications? And of course, more than half do. And of the more than half that do, you can tell by the font size to the right where are they getting those certifications? And obviously AIBD is one of the largest ones. So is CPBD. So if that's, a, that's an entity that you wanna look at for their offerings or their standard uh, programs or, or certifications that they offer, that would be a near, let's call it a competitor or a benchmark for you. Um, but, but AIBD, as you can see, stands out boldly on the list. Gender. Interesting again, we didn't expect to see this. I don't know why, but Trifecta went in thinking that this would be a balanced group of male to female. It didn't turn out that way. Of the 443 that responded, 83% of them were male. And I don't know what that infers for information on the 443 that responded, um, but we just wanted you to know that, that it was not it was not proportionate to the population or necessarily even proportionate to the profession. It might be worth looking into um, why it was a disproportionate number of males responded. And again, what sources did they use to stay up to date? And this is where you get a big gold star because AIBD was the loudest voice in the room. Uh, professional trade magazines and uh, among us, uh, professional and trade magazines are extremely important to this audience as are webinars, but webinars can overlap with association membership because it may be the association that provided the webinar. So the webinar was the format, but when we asked specifically about deriving up-to-date information for their profession from a professional association, AIBD, eclipsed every other response in the group. It's a little biased because we're serving, we're, we're, we're surveying AIBD members, but they have the option to say that they use other sources to stay current and they, they chose you. Products and purchases that they specify or recommend, um, which I found was very interesting. When we went literally item by item and to deconstruct a building project or a design project, they told us all of the products where they specifically were making the recommendations or specifying the material of choice. This is so meaningful to the manufacturing world out there that your member base, seven out of 10 times, specifies the doors and the windows that go into a project or, or the actual insulation that's in the walls or the lumber type being you know, used. A full 50% of the time, they're picking the millwork, the HVAC and the electrical systems, even, even the brand of drywall. We were surprised. They don't stipulate the tools. That's not their area. <laughs> and that makes complete sense. Uh, but pretty much every other component you can think of, at least one in four times, they, they're specifying the security system. And seven out of 10 times, they're picking the doors and the windows. So they have extreme influence over the materials being used, which makes your, your, your members extremely interesting. The products that they purchase and specify and recommend by the project type. And I won't take you through this entire table, but it's interesting to know that when you talk about appliances for single family custom homes or single family tract homes, they're doing the choosing 50% of the time. Not the, not the homeowner, 
not the builder, but your designers are doing the, the, the choosing for these types of things. And if you look at doors and windows, again, very interesting across the fourth line down, doors and windows, 70% of the time they're picking the doors and they're picking the windows, no matter what type of project type it is. What I particularly like about this slide is that it also defines their role and the type of project that it might be. So for instance, to the far right, you see schools and educational institutions. And while not a lot of the designers actually get in, involved in those projects, you'll see that the N was only 28 of the 443 respondents, but 28 of them actually do get involved in designing for schools and educational institutions. And they have a varying degree over the types of products that they specify. So cabinets, for instance, might be as high as 71%. 71% of the 28 people said they absolutely make the purchase, specify it, or recommend it. But when you get down to something like the heavy equipment that might be used to do that installation, only one in five has any role in arranging for that or specifying who that might be. So, so this grid is particularly valuable to understand what kinds of projects your members are doing the most. The very first row horizontally under the types of projects is the number of designers of the 443 that took the survey that actually do that type of project regularly. And as you can see, single family custom homes steals the day, but tract homes and multifamily condos and co-ops and multifamily rental facilities are at least one in every four, if not half of the sample that we surveyed. So we're eager to sample your entire database and these numbers will become very statistically significant. But if you're ever wondering about how to align the AIBD member base to the manufacturer's base, I think this chart is very powerful. I doubt the people that sell caulks and sealants or doors and windows, as a, for instance, understand how very influential your members are. So if you don't have a corporate client or multiple corporate clients in the doors and windows space, you should, because products purchased, specified, or recommended by the designers happens 70 to 80 something percent of the time through an AIBD designer. So they're making that choice. And those corporate uh, manufacturers of windows and doors should want to be in front of your members as often as they can be, because they have a very significant role in making selections around those permanent components. And so I see a nice intersection here between your member base and potential corporate members of AIBD finding value in being members because they have a direct access to influence the people that are purchasing, purchasing and specifying at a very high rate for these kinds of projects. And AIBD membership overall, just to, just to share with you who responded to the survey, it was nearly split, 50-50. Mem members took the survey, but non-members also took the survey. So these are people that are engaged with you. They've potentially made it onto your mailing list. They've asked to be kept in the loop about your, your webinars, and they are part of this sample. So they're out there to join, and they're engaged enough to tell us who they are and what the nature of their work is. So I think that's exciting from an opportunity for new member acquisition to know that half the people took this survey. And that concludes the research that we provided complementary to AIBD. Uh, Trifecta values this partnership very much. In fact, right now we have a project where we're missing 20 designers. And we think that if we disseminated that survey to the AIBD member list, the first 20 designers that matched the criteria for what our OEM manufacturing client is looking for, they would get to see new to the world innovations and get a voice in, in selecting which ones get developed and come to market. So there's just one application of how the, their membership with AIBD affords them a forward look at what will be available for their projects and be able to influence which of those uh, devices or materials will even get developed in the first place. And if designers don't think that, that their, their project uh, buyers would be willing to pay for it, 
they can influence what gets developed and what doesn't get developed by manufacturers. So that's exciting. We hope to be reaching out on that today. Can I answer any questions for you, Steve, for AIBD? Um, no, fantastic work. It's been at least 20 years since we've done any kind of uh, research similar to this. Um, so thank you very much for being a partner with us. So what are the opportunities that you'll have for AIBD members going forward now that you've done this work? Oh, I think, I think they're numerous. Trifecta works with a lot of manufacturers that develop products for the building products industry. Who better than the designers who purchase, recommend, and specify those products to connect, especially when it comes to R&D resources? We have many, many clients who have tremendous intellectual capital on their staff they could make a myriad of things. If you're Marvin Windows, you have so many options for what you can do with windows, with materials, with skylights, with slider doors, or with other glass barrier walls. The question is, is which ones do you develop? Which ones do designers gravitate to? Which ones solve the greatest industry problems? Maybe it's something that isn't currently offered in hurricane grade. Maybe it's something that's not currently offered in finishes that would hold up better, look better, sell better, aesthetically enhance a rental property so that the occupancy rates go up. That's what the manufacturers at Trifecta Research works with want. And we have other associations like HERI, the Home Improvement Research Institute, that also wants to share that information with the world, but they're not collecting it because they don't have the designers to speak to. Those aren't the members. AIBD has the members that have powerful influence over what gets incorporated into these projects. By the time the homeowner gets involved, they are selecting from a subset of options. Those options are being screened upstream by designers to say, we're not gonna offer flooring in every possible material shade, hue, and stain. We're gonna choose the width, what it's made of, how it performs, and the colors that it's offered in that represent great design and great solutions. And then that subset will get manufactured and it will get offered to a consumer base, either at retail or through custom showrooms, dealers, and distributors. So AIBD members have a powerful voice with the B2B manufacturers before the consumer world sees any of these choices. And that's, that's the voice that our clients want to hear from. So as projects come up where our client has specified that a building designer is who they want to speak with, you are literally the perfect entity to help them with that. And it's win-win. Sometimes they're paying for your members to take the survey. In fact, often they are paying for your members, so they will be compensated for their time if it takes 10 or 15 minutes to share their opinion. But better than that, better than the money, is knowing. Is knowing that you can influence what will be brought to market and you will be able to recommend it from an informed point of view because you know why you chose it. You chose window A over skylight B. And all of that happens way upstream with building designers. So we're, we're extremely excited about it. We're just, we just now understand what AIBD has and we have a microcosm of your 8,000 names captured here. This is the first 440 that we're willing to take the survey. Imagine the 6,600 that we haven't spoken to you yet. We don't know who they are. We don't know if they're young or they're, they have a few years experience, a great deal of experience. They could be working on commercial projects as well as residential projects. So as we, as we hope to have an iterative opportunity to go out to the members who have not responded yet and capture that data and give it to AIBD. So your database should become very robust about who, who your members are and, and, and what, what projects they engage in. And then I think, Steve, you, you and AIBD should be able to um, select thought leadership curriculum and webinars that your members will gravitate to because you will have the evidence that they that they do that work. You'll know exactly the work that they're doing. So that's 
it, it's a, it's a win all the way around, and we're very excited about it. I'm very excited about it as well. You're making my job easy for me. Um, I want to. So, <laughs> what what does it look like when you reach out to our database, our members, and get them involved? Is that just online surveys or uh, focus it groups? It could be both. It could be both. It could be qualitative or quantitative research. Sometimes a, a the ask is just understanding why behind something. Why don't consumers gravitate to particular things? Why don't builders use certain materials? And so they, the, the, the developer or the manufacturer has a problem, but they don't really understand why it's happening. Your designers may hold the answer. They may have worked with those materials, dealt with those contractor complaints, designed with those items in mind and found that they were in conflict with other systems or materials that the designer likes to use. And unpacking those reasons solves a mystery for a manufacturer. And it helps them to product optimize all future generation products or to discontinue something because it's just natively not gonna work. So they, if it's a why situation, why does it happen? What are they looking for? Um, what would they like to see in a development, in a design? That's at the front end of innovation, or it's in the middle where there's a problem and a product is failing. When it's not that, and they want to understand scale, meaning we want to make sure that we're developing something that will serve the needs and the, and the design aesthetic of the fattest part of the bell curve, then we do it with an online survey. And in both scenarios, we introduce trifecta research as the research engine, but AIBD is sponsoring this insight opportunity. Here is your seat at the table to tell us what you need, tell us why a product doesn't work, or tell us in a quantitative scaled way, if you could choose A through F, which ones are your preferred options and tell us all of the attributes about those solutions that you like or dislike. And we can collect that at a scale level so the manufacturer can make big financial decisions with confidence. So yes, it could be an online survey. They're rarely more than 10 minutes. If it's diagnostic interviews or focus groups, those might be an hour long. In either scenario, your members will be compensated, either individually for taking the survey or there will be a sweepstakes with a substantial reward for a name to be drawn for that. It could be a $500 gift card or you know, something significant. So it just depends on the nature of the survey and how long it is and how many people we need to respond to give our, our, our client confidence. But I, I think for them, it's, it's beyond, the, beyond the, uh, the honorariums. It's being heard. These are, many of your firms are small concerns, fewer than 10 or 15 employees. Nobody's calling them nobody's asking for their opinion. They're just serving up products and your designers have to choose from whatever, whatever is served up to them. These are all scenarios where they can influence what that is and, and, and make new innovation come to market to meet a need. And, and they are a rich and valuable source for that. So this is a, you, AIBD has provided the vehicle to make it easy to reach this audience, which is fantastic. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, now, <laughs> let's, flip, let's flip the coin over, and uh, yes. maybe maybe I'm going down a path that, that leads to a dead end, but uh, what about reaching consumers? What if our AIBD members wanted to use Trifecta Research to find out what it is people want in their houses? Uh, for example, a lot of our members, uh, as you may have learned through this, sell plans online that are already drawn. Right. Right. But right. You, you've got to develop that in advance. And you may have had one client that ordered that plan and you think, well, maybe other clients will want it. But is there a way to go in and and uh, use your services to fine tune those designs and find out? Or maybe they're they're developing a yeah. whole new community for a developer and they get hired to design three or four models. Um, is there a way that we can yeah. enlist you to find out what what the consumer's wanting? Uh, absolutely. And even consumers in an area, in, in a defined geographic area. So if you said, what I really need, I've won the assignment to design for a community in Raleigh, North Carolina. And what I'm looking for 
is a sample of 100 consumers who are home and tenders, meaning they are in the market right now for a new home sometime in the next three to 12 months. And we want my developer to be in the consideration set. So what do I need to do as a designer to make sure that I understand who are those people in Raleigh, North Carolina? What is their anticipated spend for this home? What is their desired square footage? What are their priority room uses? Do they need more bathrooms? Do they need a flex room that can be an office or a guest room? Do they need the ability to have a basement, finished or unfinished, by the time that they buy it? Are they counting that in the square footage of their home intentions? And when you know that, you can see where the data clusters. And more people would be willing to give up 20 square feet in a great room to get a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 12 or a 10 by 15 flex room. Then you can design and know that your designs will be highly successful because the people that are in the market for a home right now are telling you what they're looking for and they'll need it. What you want is a matchup. Aha, I want 1,600 square feet with 2.5 bedrooms and the 0.5 is a flex room. And I want everything on one level because there are more 55 plus shoppers in that market right now than potentially any other group. Or you'll find out that it's a lot of emerging millennial families. And while it's only a husband and wife and one baby today, they have plans for more children and they're gonna need, need at a minimum three defined bedrooms and a shared family space that's at least X big or Y big. And right now I would be asking questions about outdoor space usage because COVID is with us. It will be with us certainly throughout 2021. And it won't be the last reason that we find ourselves spending more time at home with our families in the future. So people have really rethought the use of flexible spaces changeable spaces, wall configurations that potentially can be moved at a later point in time for a different need state, and also outdoor spaces or better deploying unused spaces in houses, like the corner of the basement where the utility equipment is kept. They're wondering if uh, homes can be designed with all of that in mind. There would be questions about home security about smart and connected expectations. We could suggest a plethora of topics that your designers could survey and build a, a 10 minute survey of homeowners in the intended area. If it's a, we could also do it national. If you wanted to group all of your designers questions, Steve, ask them all. If you could ask anything right now about home buyers, home intenders in the market in the next one month to 12 months, and you collected all of their questions. Think of it as a kind of a junk survey. It's the kitchen sink of surveys. If everybody gets three questions until we hit 60 questions, start sending your questions in the first 60 that we get that are not duplicates, we will build a survey. AIBD could fund that survey and your members could all chip in if that's a way to fund it. And they could never buy the answers to 60 great questions by themselves, but they'll definitely get their two or three and the other 58, and they will know a lot about the home and tender market and what they should be including in their designs. So that would be a really exciting survey that AIBD could put out there as an idea, and Trifecta could provide the cost to do that. And then if you fracture it across some number of members, it would be nominal for them to pay their 50 or $100 or whatever it is, $200, and that's their share for their three questions, but they get the answers to all 60 questions. And you guys as, at AI, as AIBD could be the enabling body to, to connect us. If they can't afford it on their own in their business, maybe you can do an omni-group survey, and we'd be happy to, to entertain the cost of what that might look like. Well, fantastic. Those would be great. And we can share that. You could share those results if you wanted to. Or AIBD could keep it exclusive to members, and it's it, it's one of your benefits of joining. You get you get the inside look for 2021. 
I like the if way you join. You think. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a hook. Only AIBG members get to see what the home intender wants now and design to that. I can't wait to show this to our leadership, but for right now, we're running out of time from the time that we scheduled. So happy to come back anytime, Steve, if your membership wants to talk in a a dialogue or your leadership team wants to, Trifectos Management would be happy to join that call anytime. I will get that arranged if they do then. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Have a good day.